I am reading the 50 greatest books of all time this year. The Great Gatsby is number five on that list. Does it deserve to be there? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm reading and reviewing 52 books in 52 weeks in 2023, including the 50 greatest books of all time, as determined by an algorithm. This is my 46th book review of the year so far, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And before we talk about the book, let's talk about Mr. Fitzgerald. F. Scott Fitzgerald. He was an American novelist and short story author. Born in 1896, he died in 1940. He didn't live to see The Great Gatsby become a success, and he died thinking himself a failure as a novelist. And even more so than quite a few of the books that I've read this year, The Great Gatsby is heavily influenced by F. Scott Fitzgerald's life, experiences, and the people that he knew. Okay, the specs and stats of The Great Gatsby. This was first published in 1925. My copy has 180 pages, and I bought this at the Goodwill Bookstore for $3. And I did listen to a portion of this on Audible, where it's narrated by Jake Gyllenhaal for four hours and 49 minutes. This book was not critically acclaimed when it was first released, but it was one of those books that was sent overseas to the soldiers during World War II, and that was when it really started to take off. And now it is considered a great work and a contender for the great American novel. And it's worth noting that the original dust cover jacket was influenced by the novel and then it was done before the novel was completed and that uh, painting actually influenced and worked its way into the novel. Okay, the style of the book, and it is told in a narrative style. The story unfolding through Nick's voice. And while he is involved, he is not the main mover of the story. It's not like Lolita, where the narrator is also the main actor and everything we see in the entire novel is heavily influenced by his biases. The American dream, social class, racism, and sexuality are all the major themes of the book. The Great Gatsby isn't lyrical. It doesn't really play on words. It's not as Spartan as Hemingway. It struck me as a dreamy, almost ethereal rhythm. Okay, on to the plot of The Great Gatsby. Nick Carraway, he's a Midwestern World War I veteran who moves to New York City to become a bonds salesman. Jay Gatsby, an enigmatic multimillionaire, is his neighbor. The year is 1922, Prohibition. Gatsby has frequent parties at his house, though he's rarely seen at them. Nick's cousin, Daisy, recently moved across the bay with her husband, Tom Buchanan, an ex-Yale football star. Nick meets Jordan Baker, a professional golfer and flapper who was a childhood friend of Daisy's. Jordan tells Nick that Tom has a mistress named Myrtle, and Nick meets Myrtle at a New York City apartment where they're having a party, and Tom gets angry at Myrtle and breaks her nose. Myrtle's husband, George, owns a garage that is frequently passed as they travel to and from this city. Nick is invited to one of Gatsby's parties where he meets Gatsby, who wants to become friends with Nick. Jordan, she later tells Nick that Gatsby and Daisy met and fell in love until Daisy married Tom after Gatsby went off to war. And Gatsby, he hopes to win Daisy back from Tom, despite the fact that she's married. Tragedy ensues. Okay, that's all we're gonna talk about the plot of The Great Gatsby, and on to my thoughts. Number five greatest book of all time. Why is it where it is on that list? I kept asking myself that as I was reading The Great Gatsby. Is it better than all the other books that I've read so far this year? Honestly, I think when you get to the top 50 greatest books of all time, you could almost mix and match them to your personal preference and call it good. I will say I do think this deserves to be on the top 50 list. And I did think of Hemingway as I was reading The Great Gatsby, simply because The Great Gatsby and Hemingway are complete opposites. 
The Sun Also Rises, which was Hemingway's first novel, is set in the same time period as The Great Gatsby. The writing style is what draws you in. There's a rhythmical, dreamy quality to the text. It's words painted with watercolors, depicting the flapper bootlegging, speakeasy, somewhat dissipated libertine lifestyle of the 1920s. The story, the plot is very nice. There's not a ton of characters, but just enough depth and complexity to make it a great read. While Gatsby's wealth may be unrelatable to most of the readers, his feelings and actions are not. He tries to recover, almost take by force, his relationship with Daisy. I think we all do this. Hold on to some memory. Make it greater than it was. Idealize it in our minds and hearts. Tom's hypocrisy. His rage at Daisy for having an affair while he's actively also having an affair. Jordan's living in the moment for the moment. Nick being carried along as things happen. And all these things are what helps to elevate this read. Honestly, I think this was a great novel and it should be on your shelf. All right, guys, that's it for The Great Gatsby. Let's uh, on to the star rating. And I judge all my books on five criteria, six if I listen to it on Audible. If you have any suggestions or comments, let me know in the section below. Okay, initial response. How do I feel as soon as I finish the book? And I got a four. Recommendation. How likely am I to recommend the book? Also a four. Style. Did I enjoy the writing style? Five. Plot and structure. How engaged was I in the story? Also a five. Characters. Were they relatable, believable, engaging? Also a five. And audible. For the books that I listened to, part of them, how was the production? And it gets a four. Okay, that's 24. And 24 divided by six is 4.5. So 4.5 stars for The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I think that's a great score for this book. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed the video, like it, subscribe to see more of my content. Again, I'm doing 52 book reviews and 52 weeks in 2023. Those will all be linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out. Subscribe to see, for, to see more of my content. I do both book and whiskey reviews, which I know is not confusing for everybody. It's confusing for me. Feel free to check those out. If you came here for whiskey and you made it this far, congratulations. And there will be more whiskey videos coming up. Anyway, my guys, I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn the pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.